worthy, Lord. Father God, I thank you. Oh, it's a glorious day. Not just Mother's Day, but it's a day that we can once again assemble together and praise the Lord and give him some glory because he truly is worthy. Tears and wiped with the hairs of her head. 
Simon, you, thou gave me no kiss, but this woman since the time I came in has not ceased to kiss my feet. My head with oil thou did not anoint, but this woman, she anointed my feet with the ointment. Wherefore I say unto thee, her sins, which are many, are forgiven. For she loved much, but to whom little is forgiven, the same loveth little. And he said unto her, thy sins are forgiven. And they sat at meat with him and began to say within themselves, who is that? Forgive sins also. And he said to the woman, thy faith save thee, go in peace. I just want you to just quickly turn to your neighbor and, and, and just say, I, I hope you left your baggage at the door. Now I want you to turn to the other neighbor and, 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 and say, did you empty out your alabaster box today? And then, and then turn to that third neighbor and say one more time, go get your blessing. Go get your blessing. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I, I want to talk today about getting your blessing, how to go get your blessing, emptying out your alabaster box, and leaving all that baggage at the door. Uh, I hope everyone has come out here today to not only, uh, not because it's Sunday and because it's Mother's Day and you feel obligated to come to church. <laughs> Or somebody invited you to come. And, and I hope you came with the presence of mind that, that God wanted to see you here today. Right. And that this very appointed time, he, he has a word for you today. Right. I've come to worship the Lord today. I'll be doing it via my lips, uh, via this word, and, uh, and possibly via some dance. Possibly via some dance, if I'm lucky enough. Now, all of you are wondering about what I mean by worship. It's that thing that us Christians do, us people of faith do, when we're reverencing God. When we worship, we're saying that God has worth it, and he indeed is worthy of our praises to him. When we worship in spirit and the truth, we're saying that we recognize the Lord and that he's indeed in this place. And whenever the presence, and wherever the presence of the Lord is, we have to surmise that there is no better place to be. When you truly, truly get into the presence of the Lord, it takes you to a higher level than you can ever go on your own. But you have to be ready and willing for the journey. That's right. Now, when, when you're going on a journey, say for instance you're going on a plane ride, and you take your luggage with you, with you. most of you know that, that, of course, nowadays, with the cost of traveling by air so expensive, most people would like to pack light. You know, you take a little bit, because they're charging so much for every ounce of, of their allowable weight limits. So it would behoove you to lighten your load before you got on board the plane. Not unless you want your pockets, pockets emptied out. And just like when we worship the Lord, we need to empty out all our baggage so that we can truly experience the full presence of the Lord. See, baggage can be a whole lot of things. But for, for our purposes today, it's anything that is stealing your attention away from the Lord. And anything that is getting in the way of your worship. So if you have a true desire to worship the Lord, because I think that's why we're here, right? You're here because you have a desire to worship the Lord, correct? Okay. I want you to check all your bags at the door right now. Because on this flight, I don't want you to be weighed down with any extra cost that might prevent you from getting your blessing today. Especially when. We just know what God would do when we know what God can do when He shows up and, and shows out in the house of the Lord. And if you're overloaded with baggage, well, you might just miss out on that important blessing and that important flight of your life. Today, you must want to take flight, and if, and if you're weighed down by baggage, you you won't be able to run. Sarah, you ain't gonna be able to run if you got all that baggage. You won't be able to run around the church like you do in praise yeah, Lord if you got all that baggage weighing you down. You might just want to leave. You might just want to shout, but you won't be able to if you got about six or eight pounds of baggage holding you down. You might just have a song in your heart to sing for the Lord, but if your mind isn't clear, you might not be able to get the words out to worship Him. I want you all to say right now, "Here I am, Lord." Here I am.
Pastor Bob, because we all know about it. You know that beautiful song, and it's, you know when they sing it, it's so beautiful, so pretty. And I and I often wonder why, you know, what it truly meant, because I don't think a lot of us actually knew the true meaning of this worship that this woman did behind this alabaster box. In the book of Luke, Jesus was invited into the house of Simon the Pharisee. Uh, the Pharisees were these religious leaders who who were always looked down on those that they were who weren't just like them or who didn't have the same views of God as they did. And you know that to me this was kind of odd that a Pharisee would would ask Jesus to come into the house because um, they, they were so self-righteous and sanctimonious uh, they, they, they thought that they knew it all and that God, they had all, God all wrapped up and you know that they weren't really giving Jesus any credibility any due. So it was odd that Simon, this know-it-all high and mighty Pharisee, would invite Jesus to his house. It would almost seem at first if Simon was somehow, I don't know, setting Jesus up for something or trying to use him for some kind of popularity. But for real, I believe it was Jesus who was doing the setting up just to teach this Pharisee a lesson. Now keep in mind that Simon is pretty much like some of the modern day Pharisees we live and work with today. He knows a good thing. He knows that popular person. So yes, invite him to your house so that you can look big time and be the envy of all the land. Now think about it. When all these folks heard that Jesus was going to be at Simon's house, you know that they were probably all lined up, all ready to get a glimpse of Jesus. So, so Jesus is in Simon's house and, and all the groupies, phones and groupies are outside and this woman in the city, a lot of the texts say that she was a prostitute and she was a sinner. Someone totally beneath the realm of a Pharisee. She boldly made her way in to see Jesus. The scripture says she stood at his feet behind him. She hadn't even touched him yet. <coughs> she, she, she was crying so hard just being in his presence. She cried so hard. She shed so many tears. It was enough to wash Jesus' feet. This was the beginning of this woman's transformation. She had just merely came into the presence of God, and it caused her to burst out in tears for reverence to him. Just being in the presence, she didn't even touch him. She didn't even hug him. She didn't even shake his hand. She was just in his space. And just being in his space made her just break out in tears and just want to praise and worship and magnify his name. Just being in his, just not even doing anything. He didn't say anything to her. She was, he was just there, and she was just there. I mean, just, I, I don't know about y'all, but that thing just resonated with me. Just to be in a place with somebody so holy and so great that just, just the mere presence of just laying your eyes on him make you want to fall out and, 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 and fall at his feet and praise his name. Because she knew this sinner, this prostitute, knew more than the Pharisees that this Jesus, that she was laying her, her tears out for, this Jesus was the only one that could redeem her from her sin. <laughs> See, she had done something that she normally didn't do. She stepped out on faith. And, and, and just like the woman with the issue of blood, she stepped out on faith. Yes. And she had to get into his presence because she knows she wanted to be healed and forgiven and be changed in an instant. Yes, this prostitute, this woman of the streets, this sinner had more faith than most saved people of the day. She had more faith than Simon the Pharisee did. In those days when a person of importance came into your house, you washed their feet, you anointed their heads with oil, and you kissed them. But all Simon did to Jesus was diss him. He ain't give, kiss him, he ain't, he ain't do nothing. See, this woman with this alabaster box did what Simon should have done. So let me just give you real quick with, with an uh, explanation what an alabaster box is. An alabaster box was, was a very expensive uh, box, and it housed very expensive oils. And you only broke it out for the important people or uh, that you wanted to, to bless and, 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 you know, important events. And, and like some of us do when we have, you know, family over and we break out our friends or people we esteem in high favor and we break out the good china, the good silverware, you know, the good the the, 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 the good steak, not, not, the, not, the, not the flank steak, but you know, bring out the food house of the Delmonico's. We, we really show them some love. Well, this alabaster box represented purity and wealth too. So 
you know, on the purity side of things, Simon was looking at this lady, and she, he was, you know, nose turned up in the air, and he was all judgmental to this woman. And, but, and at the same time, still not even trying to believe that Jesus was worthy enough for this sinner to put her oils on his head. See, this woman, some call her Mary of Bethany. Some texts just say woman with the alabaster box. She had her mind made up that she was going to get into the presence of Jesus. And she wasn't letting nothing distract her. And she didn't even care whose house she was going into either. She just knew that she could no longer live without being forgiven. See, she had a mission. And she wasn't going to stop until she had it completed. This woman wasn't there to do anyone harm. All she wanted to do was just to merely get into the presence of Jesus. Now, y'all still with me? I got a little bit more to go. My brother might be two hours late. Okay. <laughs> just, just, just a little bit. Cheryl getting ready to fall out right now. She only gets sit still for a minute. <laughs> now, now, we have to, we have to start throwing some of our baggage off the flight so we can hear what the Lord is saying. Right now, if you're sitting here and you're thinking about macaroni and cheese, <laughs> or them spirits you got smoking in the smoker, just in your spirit, just shout shipwreck in your spirit and come, and come on back on board and hear what the Lord has to say. Because see, you, you don't want to miss your blessing. It's a sad, it's a sad thing when you sit in the church and you hear in the presence of the Lord and you still miss your blessing. That's a sad thing. Now, now this woman, all she did was she she got close to Jesus and she broke out crying. And you know, it you know it couldn't have been a normal cry because a normal cry, you know, I don't know if you normally cry. That's not enough tears to wash somebody's feet. I don't think so. I, I mean, this cry had to be like somebody turned the, the, the faucet on high and it was probably just coming out of her ears, like uh, eyes and ears and whatever, all of it, just, just pouring out of her to be able to wash Jesus' feet. It had to be one of them, them body-wrenching um, cries, like, like just nobody's business. And, and she was letting go of all that baggage. She was sending it to the unclean luggage department, hoping that it's going to be lost forever because she was getting into the presence of Jesus. Now, Simon, I, I was, when I was just studying this, I just thought Simon was straight crazy. See, Simon, Simon with his crazy self, was standing there looking at this woman and Jesus, and he was talking to himself. In the, in the text, he, he said, it says he spoke within himself. So, you know, that means he was talking to himself. He was, he was talking out loud. So, in his mind, while he was in the same space as Jesus, he was in the space, but he wasn't in the presence of the Lord, that's true. With his attitude and what his mind was focused on, he was probably sucking his teeth and, and you know, on his breath talking. And, and, and it just dawned on me. I said, well, wait a minute. He talking to himself about this woman and about Jesus, and Jesus is hearing everything he's saying. He, he may not think he knows, but he's hearing everything he's saying. You know, that just shows you how he didn't respect who Jesus was and who he was and the redeeming power that he had. He didn't even give caution because, you know, he was a Pharisee, so he had it all and he knew it all. Um, so in his mind, he was talking Jesus out, talking about who? Well, if, if this man was such a prophet, then surely he would have known what type of woman this is, this sinning prostitute crying and carrying on and, and she cutting the food and whatnot over him. And, and on top of it all, she pouring out the good oil. The, the, the good oil, man, don't she know what we can get on the market? And we can sell this oil, she wasted it on this man, this Jesus. It, 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 she must be crazy. Now, that's not what it says, I'm just paraphrasing. Brother Nate, because I don't, I, I love Brother Nate, because I'm just paraphrasing. I'm just paraphrasing. I'm, so I don't want nobody rebuking me in the name of Jesus. And, you know what I'm saying? You know, Mr. King, that's not what it says in the word. Let's just, just paraphrase it. But, but Simon, all under his breath, talking trash and not even realizing that he was missing the whole point of what she was doing. She was worshiping the Lord. She came with the intentions of worshiping Jesus. She wasn't coming to worship Simon or anyone else. All she wanted to do was get into the presence of the Lord and worship Jesus. We got a few Simons in the church today. 
you know, the ones that, that see someone coming in and, you know, they, you know, they got troubles. You can tell, you might know something about them and they, they get up here at altar call and they, they, they worship in the Lord or they, and they, see, and they worship in the Lord or stand and worship in the Lord and, you know, they crying and, and you sitting there and you're like, mm, 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 what's going on with her? Mm. She's pouring out her heart. Mm -mm. You know the one that 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 Simon that 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 that, that that's uh, instead of them being in the presence of the Lord and trying to get their deliverance too, they all under their breath and in their heads and as if God can't hear us. Because you know sometimes I don't think we think about that. We think of things we hear that God, God hears what we say. And and say, mm, look at her over there, all crying like that. I just saw her last night. Now, mind you, the whole time this crying woman got her mind stayed on Jesus, that Simon of today and that Simon of then, he got their minds off of Jesus and not in the presence of the Lord, totally missing out on what God is trying to bless them with. <coughs> See, now I'm going to tell you how silly I am, because last night, I, well, this morning, I'm sitting there, you know, sometimes the Lord can be so funny, because, you know, I, I think he likes to have fun with us, you know, I really do, I really do, and, and because I'm silly anyway, I, I, I believe that he kind of uses me sometimes in a silly way, so I, I was just sitting there, and I have the TV on, and she said, Simon's, the Simon sitting in church today sounded like, um, a character from an old show we used to watch called Living Color. Y'all remember Benita Betrayal, right? Ooh. From from a Living Color. Y'all remember her? You know that that's what some of the signs of the church today are like. Sitting in church talking, about, mm hmm. Look at her over there worshiping the Lord like she's so sorry. Oh. You didn't hear from me, but 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 Miss Benita heard. She was out last night at the club. She was two stepping, but she wasn't dancing with Jesus though. But you didn't hear from me. You didn't hear from me. You didn't hear from me. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Miss Benita, she don't gossip. No, 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 she don't gossip. Miss Benita, she was trying to be the captain of the gossip patrol in the church instead of worshiping right along with this woman. See, you can't be paying attention to who's coming into the church, the baby's crying, texting on your cell phone, thinking about what you're going to eat when you're in church when it's worship time. How you going to be in worship and be in tune with God if you're thinking about everything that's going on around you, right? It's almost impossible. I, I mean, like, have you ever had, like, two radio stations on at the same time? And you got you got one station on the country and you got one station on the R&B and you got them both up at the same time. And you try to listen to them. You, it's mass confusion. It's, it's, you're not getting anything because you're not hearing anything because there's too much going on at one time. See, Simon was so busy acting like Miss Benita instead of catching on to the blessing of the Lord and what he had in store for him that he was missing out on being delivered. If us along with Simon would be more worried about worship and tuning everything out, just think how blessed this house and how you personally could truly be. Matthew 6, 24, it, it tells us that we can't serve two masters for we would either hate the one or love the other. So when you hear a church, the only master that you should be worshiping is the master, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Your mind should be totally staying on him while you're here. He don't want a half-hearted praise. He don't want a half-hearted worship. He don't want you to come in here and be thinking about all the troubles of the world when you said you're saved and you've laid your baggage at the door and you laid all your cares and cast it all on him. If you believe that, then act like it. Be in here and praise him. And not just here, because we know that praise is just not here. It's everywhere we go. Even outside these doors, you got to praise him. There you got to praise him. Here you got to praise him everywhere. You got to be in a mindset of praise at all times so that you can keep your mind stand on him and believe that you're going to be delivered. I, I, you know, I don't know about you, but I constantly got the Lord on my mind. Constantly. I, I mean, I don't always have a Bible in front of me, but I constantly, I'm talking to him and I'm telling him things and, and I'm asking him things. Not just asking for things, but asking his advice and what he needs. And that's just keeping him in a constant connection with me. Now, let me get back to the text for a minute. Now, Simon, with his crazy stuff, he didn't even realize that Jesus 
heard what, what he was thinking. So he, he told Simon, he said, Simon, I got, I got something to say.